good morning children for 10th standard we begin the new semester with a new chapter the chapter is nervous system you know by this time you know the reduced syllabus you have seen but nervous system is there nervous system endocrine system these are there so uh, first of all you have to know that in human body there are two systems which coordinates the action of the various organs and the various systems in the body one of them is the nervous system the second one is endocrine system there is a difference between the nervous system and endocrine system nervous system the actions are very quick the responses are also very quick and uh, they are uh, they, you know the uh, what is called the transmission is very fast whereas in case of endocrine system the action may start late it is slow but many of the endocrine function and nervous system the functions are similar type and you will see that in many cases the neuro hormones in case of nervous system are those same as those of the hormones which are secreted in the endocrine system now first of all we will go to the that the functional unit of the nervous system is the neuron so we have to know the structure of the neuron all of you by this time know the, the structure just we revise it because you have studied in standard 9 and 10 uh, 8 and 10 so this is the this part is called the cytoplasm of the cell body and in the cytoplasm there are some projections these are called the dendrons remember the dendron in these are the places where the receptors are there all the types of receptors are on the dendron in inside the cell body or nucleus we have dark stained granules or the missing granules this is called the axon hilla and a part of this is extended this is called the nuclei axis and this portion is called the axon in axon you will find the nuclei axis is sometimes covered by the myelin sheath as well as the nuclei lemma if it is covered by the myelin sheath and the nuclei lemma we call it a medullated or myelinated nerve fiber if so this is a myelinated nerve fiber and you will have in myelinated nerve fiber this type of collaterals are present usually the transmission in myelinated nerve fibers are or neurons are faster than the non myelinated neurons here we have the nucleus of the swan shell these are called the nodes of the rein here usually the impulse uh, travel with the salted ring conduction of jumping through the nodes of the rein here so always the movement is from the side on to the axon remember this the movement of the trans impulse in a neuron is always from side on to axon not from side on to axon to side on so this is a unidirectional movement and this is called the terminal arborization where it, this portion is called the synaptic norm they may form a synapse here with another dendrite dendron or dendrite of another neuron so this is a single cell and now cells are said to be one of the longest cell in the human body now we will go to the types of the nervous system in nervous system you know there are three types of nervous system one is called the cns the central nervous system pns the peripheral nervous system and ans the autonomic nervous system all of these nervous system they act together you know they act in unison so there should not be any type of uh, what we call this uh, wrong movement along this then it can create trouble the cns is two part one is called the brain another is the spinal cord we'll study them individually the peripheral nervous system two types of nerves are there one called the cranial nerve which emerges from the base of the brain and these are all sensory motor and mixed nerve in spinal nerves these are all mixed nerve which arise from in between the spinal uh, what is called vertebral column from the spinal cord so they have one sensory ending and one motor ending in the autonomic nervous system you can understand from the term autonomic is this nerves do certain type of action which help in the autonomous movement or automatic movement there are two types one is called the sympathetic nerve another is called the parasympathetic nerve so we will know them individually what are the function first we start with the brain the brain is enclosed inside the skull in a brain box or called the cranium sometimes it is called brain box sometimes it is called the cranium 
Now this is the heart structure which protects the brain. But inside the brain also there is a covering. The brain in the spinal cord is covered by an outer membrane which is called the meninges. The meninges has three layers. The outermost layer is called the dura matter. The middle layer is called the arachnoid matter. And pyre matter is the lowermost layer which is on the surface of the brain. Now here I have shown the meninges. In between the meninges and the brain, okay, there are uh, there is a space when you call the subarachnoid space, or sub, uh, in the subarachnoid space it is filled with a fluid which is called the cerebrospinal fluid. The cerebrospinal fluid is present outside the brain as well as inside the brain. In there are small chambers which are called the ventricles. Now this brain you will see they are highly convoluted. You understand what is the meaning of convolution? The, it, there will be ups and downs. Some places it is raised. Some places it is uh, different. So the rest portions are called the gyrus, which is singular, gyri, it's a plural. And this depressed portion is called the sulci, which is the plural, sulcus is the singular. Now why this convolution? You know, if there is a convolution, then what happens? There will be increase in the surface area. A brain can contain, you know, the human brain is more than 1350 grams, that means 1.35 uh, kg or about 400, uh, 1.4 kg. Now, this brain contains innumerable number of the neurons and more the neurons, the efficient is the brain. So, it contains millions of this type of neuron inside the brain. To increase the surface area, this type of convolutions are there. Now, the largest portion of the brain, this is called the cerebrum. So, what is the largest part of the brain? The cerebrum. The second is the cerebellum, which is also convoluted, which is at the hind part of the brain, mainly concerned with balancing, we'll come to that in details in later on. The lower portion, there is a place called the pons, then you have the medulla, and then the spinal cord, which runs through the vertebral cord. Now this is the external morphology of the brain. We are going to study in detail later on. And just on the base of the brain, there is a small two lobe-like structures are there. They are called the olfactory lobe. The spinal cord emerges through the skull. Here at the base of the skull, there is an opening called the foramen magnum. So through that foramen magnum, it escapes and passes inside the vertebral column through certain uh, space which is called the neural canal. And in the next class, we are going to study about in details about the different parts of the brain. As you know, the brain is divided into forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. What are the different functions you have to know? You have to know about also the functions of the pons, the medulla, as well as the cerebellum. And uh, till then, uh, uh, take care and uh, we will meet in the next class. We will discuss in details about that. Please follow the self-assessment and if you have any questions, you can put up the questions. Thank you very much.